All right, this is uh, the first video I've done in quite a while. Um, COVID-19 kind of kept me out of my work, but now there's no one really here, so they said it was okay if I come down to film. Since I'll be the only one here, um, it's still social distancing. Um, hope you guys have all been well. Um, we're going to start off uh, with the 2008 Amy 1 problem number 7. I might come back later and do problems 8 and 9 and make this a three question video. For today, I've been so not filming in so long, I just wanted to get one video in and get going on making videos again. So here we go. Uh, this was done by request for another person who commented on a, a previous video. Uh, let S1 be the set of all integers n such that 100i, oh, it's S sub i, 100i is less than or equal to n is less than 100 times i plus 1. For example, S sub 4, note that that would mean that the i is now a 4. And if the i is a 4, we can plug it into here to get that 400 is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to 500, which is 4 plus 1 times 100. So then S sub 4 is the set starting at 400, because it's all these n values, uh, less than 500. Um, all these n values. Uh, so 400 is the first one, and then 401, 402, all the way to 499. Again, it's only integers. Um, just as I'm doing right now, notice that I'm not reading the whole question. Uh, I'm just processing what I read as I read it. I highly recommend doing that, trying to extrapolate or extract rather, um, you know, key information from pieces like this to make sure you're understanding what you're reading. It doesn't do any good to read all the way to the end if you don't have any idea what you read. That's just my opinion. Some people will say read the whole problem first. So how many of the sets S sub 0, S sub 1, S sub 2, all the way to S sub 999 do not contain a perfect square? Well, we could think about this now. How many sets are we working with? We're going from 0 to 999. That's 1,000 sets. So right away, we probably should consider doing complementary counting and trying to subtract all the sets that do have a perfect square. We could get started with baby steps, right? When you don't know what to do, I call it baby steps. Just try some things out. For example, we know that S sub 0 um, will be the set where n is less than or greater than or equal to 0 and less than 100. Basically, it's the first uh, 100 integers starting from 0, though. Right, um, And we could think, well, there's obviously tons of perfect squares in here. And S sub 1 will have several perfect squares as well, likewise S sub 2, and so on. But that's going to get tedious after a while. We don't have time to go this far away, so we're going to need to think of a tactic. Uh, we need a tool in our tool belt to be able to accomplish this. And the tool that I'm going to use is a sentence or a phrase that I've memorized or taught myself. Um, and that is that the difference, this is the key tool we're going to use, the difference in consecutive squares is the sum of the bases. This is such a powerful tool, it gets used all the way back on AMC 8. And here we are on the AIME, and it's coming to use again. To see why this works, just a quick review for those of you who might not know this. Most of you probably do. Um, it's got, if you take 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on, you get 1, 4, 9, and 16, right? How far apart are 1 and 4? They are 3 apart. Notice that 3 is the sum of 1 and 2, the bases of the perfect squares, 1 plus 2, ignoring the squared part, the base only, right? How far apart are 4 and 9? They are 5 apart. And here, 2 plus 3 does add up to 5. So the difference between these two numbers, or in other words, the difference in consecutive squares, perfect squares, obviously, um, is the sum of their bases, 2 and 3. 9 and 16, 3 and 4. 
right? 3 plus 4 is 7. These are 7 apart. This comes in really handy when we have to calculate perfect squares that we might not know. For example, we might not know 31 squared, but we probably all know 30 squared because it's pretty simple. You just square the 3 and add two zeros, it's 900. So for 31 squared, I just think of 900 and add these two to get 961 with relative ease. The same thing can be done going backwards. So this is 59 is the sum of these bases. I subtract 59 to get that 29 squared is 841. Right, so it's really useful for things that are right near a perfect square that we know. Um, so again, like 41 squared would be 1681 because it's just 40 squared plus 81, right? Simple, yeah? Okay, so uh, having accomplished this uh, tactic or tool that we're going to use, how do we put it to use? Well, uh, we can think that from S, uh, let's see, S sub 25, um, this will be when we use uh, this over here. S sub 25 will be 2500 is less than or equal to N is less than or equal to 2600. Well, 2500 happens to be 50 squared, right? And the thing is, is that after the first 50 squares, right? the difference in the consecutive squares is going to be over 100, right? So 50 plus 51 is 101, then therefore this will be 2601, right? But you can see they fall in a different bracket, a different um, interval, if you will, 100 unit interval. And because of that, all of the perfect squares after 50, all of those, are going to lie in a unique interval because they're more than a hundred apart. So again, when we do 52 squared, 52 squared is 103 more than this. It's 2704, right? And so you can see they're all lying in a different 100 interval length according to these sets of S. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, we want to know how many perfect squares are there before the end of this process. So we want to know S sub 999 consists of all the numbers from 99,900 to 100,000. We want to know how many total perfect squares there are before you go over this number. So again, we're going to use this tool a second time. We're just going to get close first. Let's just take a guess. 300 squared is a 9 with four zeros. So it's 90,000. That's kind of close, but not that close yet. Um, let's try 320 squared. And 320 squared is 32 squared with two zeros. 32 squared is 2 to the 10th, which you should memorize as 1,024. So 1,024 with two more zeros is 102,400. We're getting close, but we went over this time, but not by much. We're closer to the upper end than we, this one is to the lower end. So we probably don't want to reduce too much. Let's go for 315 squared. Again, things that end in 5 when you square them, you can take their first two digits, 31, and multiply it by the next two-digit number after this, or one-digit number, and you'll get 31 times 32, which is 31 squared plus another 31. It's 992, and then you take the 5 from the end and you turn it into 25. So you get 99,225 um, is this square right here, 99,225. Um, let me cover this fives trick really quick one more time. I've seen it in a different video, but you might not have seen that video. If you have numbers that end in 5, right, and you want to square those numbers, then take the part that doesn't include the five and consider it as an integer in itself. One, for example, is this integer. Multiply it by the integer that comes after it in the number line. So two, one times two is two, and then throw 25 on the end. For 25, it's two times three is six, throw 25 on the end. For 35, it's three times four, because four is the number after three, not the five, the number after three in the number line. 
3 times 4 is 12, 25. 4 times, it is 4 times 5, but not this 5. Just because 5 comes after 4, this is 20, 25, and so on. And that's what we've done here. We did 31 times 32 and tossed 25 on the end. That gets us a lot closer to the end, but we're still not quite there yet. Let's go one higher, and we don't have to calculate it because we can use this trick again. We just add these together to get 631. And if I add 631 to this, it will be 99,856. And obviously, if I do 317 squared, we're going to go over where we want to be at. So there are 316 perfect squares all together in all of the sets of S that we want from 0 to 999. Okay, so what do we do with that? If there's 316 perfect squares, we're first going to subtract the first 50 because they don't lie in a unique interval. Okay, so we subtract those 50 perfect squares and you get 266. That means there's 266 other unique intervals that contain a perfect square. Again, again, over here, after 50 squared, all of them are more than 100 apart. They do not lie in the same interval. Well, how many intervals have we covered? We've covered from 0 to 25. That's 26 intervals, right? And in those 26 intervals, there's a perfect square in every single one because all the perfect squares are less than 100 apart. Right? Because they're, if, for example, 49 squared is 99 less than this, it's 2401. They're all going to have a perfect square in it because as I march backward, I'm always subtracting less than 100. Right? So then you'll get all the way back to 0 squared or 1 squared. You'll, every single interval will have um, a perfect square in it through the first 26 intervals. So what we have to do now is take the 1,000 the 1,000 um, intervals that we have from 0 to 999, and we're going to subtract the first tw 26 intervals because those all have a perfect square, and we're looking for the ones that do not contain a perfect square. right? So we're subtracting the ones that do, and therefore everything left that's remaining will have a perfect square. Um, so then how many more do we have to subtract? We have to subtract of the 316, we took out the first 50 because all of these lie um, in the first 26 intervals. Then all of these 266 all lie in their own unique interval and we will then subtract those as well. So if I add this up, I get 266 plus 26 is 292. And what is 1,000 minus 292? It is 708, and that is the answer. Do not forget this. It is really powerful. It's a really powerful tool, not only for quick calculations of things like, you know, 49 squared, you don't know it, you just take 50 squared and subtract 99, because you know 50 squared. It's not so good for things like, I don't know, 57 squared, because it's not near anything nice. But 56 squared is pretty good, because you get 5 times 6, which is 30, 25 here, and that's 111. You can just add it to get 3136. And then you could find 57 squared. By that time, you probably could have just calculated 57 squared by hand, and that's fine too. So it's really powerful for numbers near a perfect square that we know, or that we can easily calculate. Okay, so this is the first problem we've done in a while. I hope it was helpful. Uh, we added a light to make it a little bit brighter on the board and such. Um, leave any feedback that you have, any comments, that'd be great. Give it a like and uh, we'll start filming again more frequently very soon.